Hi, in this video, we're going to be looking at the Arduino Uno timer counter module, specifically its PWM generation. Okay, we know that the uh, module can be used to generate PWM signals, and at the same time, it can also provide us interrupts whenever these uh, events occur. So the main question is whether this uh, PWM generation is tied to the interrupts or are they not? So let's have a look. Okay, over here uh, on the code side, what I've uh, provided here is a basic code uh, in bare metal where we have configured uh, timer zero channel A uh, to provide a phase correct PWM. Uh, we have provided a p-scalar value of 64 and the OCR register value of also 64. Okay, and what I have done is I have actually commented off uh, the interrupt uh, uh, enabling line. So the TI mask, which uh, enables the interrupt for the output compare match, that line has been commented off. Um, the SEI has also been commented off, and the interrupt service uh, routine has also been commented off. All right, so the only code we have is in setup, and there's nothing in the loop. Okay, in terms of the hardware connection over here, uh, basically what I have is I've connected uh, the channel uh, one, okay, to pin six, okay, and uh, channel two to pin five. Okay, well, later we go to uh, monitor two different channels. Yes, so for right now, we are interested in channel um, uh, one, which is connected to pin six, okay? Uh, so where is pin six connected, uh, or which counter or timer is connected to pin six? So to answer that question, we can look at the um, hardware configuration over here. So we can see that um, pin six is actually port D pin six, and that is tied to uh, output uh, compare timer zero channel A. All right, and that is basically the uh, configuration in the uh, code itself, where we have uh, set the Timer zero channel A, uh, com bits to one zero. All right, so if you look at the data sheet, you will see that the uh, one zero means that we want to clear on compare match uh, when counting up and set when counting down. All right, so there is uh, there is no interrupt uh, code at all. All right, the only code is configuring the basic registers and the loop. So let me download this code, okay, to the Arduino. And let's observe uh, what we get on the uh, oscilloscope. Okay, so it's done uploading. So let me adjust the camera here so you can see the waveform. Okay, so as you can see the waveform over here, we basically have a PWM signal uh, being generated. Okay, uh, of course, there's a duty cycle there. Uh, again, this is this uh, value because of the OCR register value set to 64. So it's roughly about uh, one quarter, uh, 25 percent. Okay, now the key thing to take away from this is what that the output channel is actually generating a PWM signal even though there is no interrupt configured. And why is that so? Uh, to understand, let's look at the timer block diagram. So you can see that this output compare match is basically when the TCNT register has a match with the OCR register. So this is the event that is the trigger point. Now, when this event happens, all right, we can see that there is a signal to the waveform generation blocked, and there is another parallel signal to the OCNA pin, which is the interrupt request pin. All right, and these two are two parallel uh, actions taking place whenever the output compare match occurs, which means that I can have one without the other. Okay, there is no dependency here. All right, so in this first uh, example that I've showed you, what I've done is I've disabled the interrupts, but the output compare is still uh, is configured okay, uh, correctly. So I see a PWM waveform coming out on the output compare pin. All right, now let's go ahead to enable the interrupts. Okay, so let me go back to our code here. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncomment these uh, lines of code, uh, which uh, enable the interrupt, and I have the interrupt service routine here, which I'm going to uncomment. Okay, and inside the interrupt service routine, basically what am I doing? Uh, I've created a variable called val, 
with uh, assigned to the pin phi bit value. And I just keep toggling that pin phi value and writing it to port D. Okay, so you have to first understand that the output compare pin, which is channel A, is only tied to pin six. So, so that is the only pin that I'm currently uh, controlling. Okay, uh, when I run the code. Okay, so the pin six is the one that is tied to the output compare pin directly. So it is hardware driven. Pin five is currently not connected. Okay, to the timer or counter block. It is a normal GPIO pin. So what I'm doing is basically trying to toggle that pin. All right, whenever the interrupt occurs. Okay, so that is what this interrupt service routine is doing. So let, let me run this uh, code here. Okay, so now you see, okay, the lower channel, channel two here is actually the pin five. That is pin six on top and pin five is below. So on pin five, what do you see? You see a similar waveform, but it's just inverted. All right, so the waveform is, is uh, again, uh, I think the more important aspect here is that the interrupt service routine is now running whenever the compare match occurs. Okay, so the compare match occurs whenever we are having a match when the uh, OCR register matches the TCNT register. All right, so whenever there is a match, there is a jump to the interrupt service routine. So I'm toggling the pin five. All right, so that is what is being observed on the uh, oscilloscope over here. All right, so you can see that I can use this interrupt service routine to do something else. All right, so this, I can now uh, say that if I want, wanted to use um, the same uh, PWM signal on a different GPIO pin, all I need to do is to just change this value here. Okay, so I'm, I'm not tied to the um, particular GPIO pin that the hardware is mapped to. Okay, so the hardware is mapped to the OCA uh, pin, all right, based on the uh, multiplexing options we have here, all right. But if I wanted to generate the same or similar PWM in, on another pin, okay, all I need to do is to use the interrupt, okay, use the interrupt to manually toggle the pin. Okay, so of course, uh, here it looks inverted only because uh, the default value that I set is one, all right. So when the first compare match occurs, all right, going it, it, from one, it becomes low, all right. So if I just wanted it to be the same, all you need to do is to make the first value here zero. All right, so if I run this now, okay, uh, you can see that I will be able to generate a similar waveform on both the uh, channel one and channel two. Okay, yeah, so now we have it here. All right, so you can see that now both channel one and channel two have a similar PWM signal. The main difference is the signal on top. The channel one signal is the one that is coming directly from the OC, uh, OCOA pin, okay, which is hardware driven. All right, that means through the timer hardware block itself. Whereas the one coming out on channel two, which is pin five, it is manually done in a sense, all right, because I'm toggling the pin in the ISR. Okay, so the counting and, and the duty cycle, all of that is still managed by the timer module. Okay, the only thing is whenever the match occurs, I am just manually toggling it in the ISR. All right, so let me just show you one last uh, scenario. So what we have done is we have seen the first scenario where we have the output on the output compare pin, all right, without the interrupt. So now I've also added the interrupt. So on the interrupt also, I can generate a similar PWM, but using the uh, toggling on in the ISR itself. All right, so now let me uh, show you the last variation, which is to have only the interrupt service routine without the output compare pin generating the waveform. Okay, and to do that, all I need to do is to change the COM OA bits from one zero to zero zero. Okay, so if you look at your data sheet, basically when it's zero zero, all right, it basically tells us that the channel is disconnected from the hardware block. So it behaves like a normal GPIO. All right, so even though the timer is, is running, the, the match is, output compare match is happening, the interrupt is being triggered, but there is no activity on the output pin. All right, so in terms of the block, okay, you can say that what is happening is that only this pathway is being triggered. Whereas even though I'm sending a signal here, there is no waveform coming out. All right, because the, 
waveform generation has been disconnected. Okay, when I set it to uh, zero, zero. Okay, so that is the change I made from one zero, I changed it to zero, zero. Okay, so now if I run it, okay, so now you see that only the lower channel is being triggered. Okay, so let me just uh, set the trigger to channel two, then. Okay, so now you can see that only uh, channel two uh, is having a waveform because the channel uh, channel one, which was connected to pin six, has now been disconnected. Okay, from the timer block, so only pin five is being manually toggled through the ISR. So I hope that this gives you a clearer idea on uh, what is happening. That both the timer block and the counter block, uh, I, mean, I mean the timer block, can basically be used to generate PWM signals, all right? And if you want interrupts, you can have it. If you don't want, we can just have the uh, hardware generated signal. Or if you do not want the hardware signal, and you just want the interrupts, you can also take that option. All right, so you have these variations when you use the timer or PWM block. Okay, so I hope uh, things are clearer now. All right, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.